Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today I wanna to talk about the Rogue Six Shooter Plates, which I've been using for around eight months or so now. And this is just going to be a review on the plates and my thoughts on them in case you're interested in buying them, which I assume you are if you're watching this video. I'm not going to go over my account of why I chose them for this build, because I've already done that in a whole series called Picking Plates, where I chronicle all the different types of plates out there, from cheap plates to secondhand plates to calibrated plates, bumper plates, and what led me to my final decision of getting these machined plates from Rogue. And for those of you that don't wanna watch the video, which I hope you do watch that series because I do think there's some insight and helpful tips in there, the bottom line is I find that machined plates offer the best balance between accuracy and price. So the best bang for your buck and still being good quality plates. So that being said, let's talk about these particular ones. And I think the biggest thing that jumps out to most people with these plates is the way that they look. And I gotta agree, they are very aesthetic. In fact, they're some of my favorite looking plates. They remind a lot of people of the Ivanko revolvers because they are almost identical except they have one less hole. They have seven, this one has six, but these ones are much more affordable and I actually find the build quality on these to be much, much better. And that's one thing that you really have to look out for with Ivanko these days is the fact that while they used to be really known as a well, high performing company in terms of the product and most of the stuff was made here in the USA, they have since outsourced almost all their production in terms of their plates to China. And if you talk to a lot of kind of what I would consider old meatheads, they will say and agree that the quality has since dropped off some. So the plates are no longer as accurate as they used to be back in the day, so to say. So I definitely took a look at those plates. And again, I chronicled that in the other videos before, but I think this offers a lot of people a great option is they're very aesthetic looking plates. They remind people of the Ivanko's, but they're much better priced and much more accurate, which I think for most people is a win. Now, obviously how plates look, plays a factor for some people. A lot of people out there will say, it doesn't matter how plates look, and I somewhat agree to that. But not only do these look very good in my opinion, but they're also very functional. Number one, the biggest thing for me is going from calibrated competition bumper plates to calibrated steel plates is they were very much a pain in the ass to get on and off a weight tree or off a bar and kind of digging your fingers in there or holding them and moving them, walking them back and forth, especially for the heavier plates. With these plates, again, because they're aesthetic, they have the holes cut into them, it makes it super easy to grip because all of those holes actually act as handles. So moving weights from here to there has never been easier for me. Not to mention, if you wanna get pretty creative, there's actually a lot of exercises you can do with just the plates themselves, because again, they have built-in grips to them, and it's not something like you're really trying to grasp or hold on to, or have issues holding like you would maybe, let's say, like a urethane plate, or maybe you have a deep dish plate, in which case you see the same benefits of that. So not only do they look great, but also functionality-wise, they are very well performing. Now, speaking of that, one of the big reasons I wanted to go with these particular plates is because I wanted something that was accurate, but I also didn't want to spend the same amount of money that I spent on calibrated plates like I have in the past. So I chose these particular ones because when you take a look at the bigger plates, so the 25s, 35s, and 45s, they're advertised to be within 1% plus or minus of what the stated weight should be. Now for me, what I did is I went ahead and weighed a lot of my plates on a scale, took an average, and what I found was on average, the 45 pound plates actually weighed 49.8 pounds. So that's roughly within 0.04%, so not even that full 1%, 0.04%, so more than half less than what the accuracy should be. So very accurate when it comes to the 45s, which is great. Typically what you find in a lot of cheaper plates is that accuracy for those bigger plates can be all over the place. Next on the 35s, I found that, since I only have two, unfortunately, because all plates matter, of course, that the accuracy on these was actually 100%. So both of my 35 pound plates weighed exactly 35 pounds. And then it came to the 25s, which again, I have two of those as well. They actually were a little bit over. They weighed 25.2 pounds, but all again, extremely accurate and all within the tolerances allowed or advertised as. Now, when it comes to the other plates on here, what most consider would be the change plates, the tens, the fives, the two and a halfs, they're advertised to be within 3%. I don't really worry about those too much because they're smaller denominations. They're not gonna make a big difference as if I might probably only have up to two tens on one side at a time. So I'd only have probably a single five or a single two and a half. So the tolerances on there don't really matter that much because you're not gonna really see much weight difference as opposed to let's say you're lifting 495 pounds, in which case you have a total of 1045s on there. And if those were all not very accurate, you could have a huge weight swing in that case. So the change plates don't matter much, but they're within 3% from what I've seen as well. 
Now, speaking of the chains plates, probably one of the only things that I don't really like about this particular set is the fact that the smaller plates don't match the bigger plates in aesthetics. So they don't have those same round grips that you get with the other plates. Now, again, I understand why this is. It's just because it doesn't make sense to do this to a smaller weight because it would be harder to make it the actual stated weight and still take out those big chunks required by the holes. And again, if you take a look at what Ivanko did, which I really have said in other videos that I think these are basically their tribute to or Rogue's version of what Ivanko does, they do it in a similar fashion where the chains plates also don't have the holes. Now, speaking of the other plates and these ones out here, particularly with the chains plates, Rogue also has another machined set, which I just believe is called their machined plates. And they look very similar to your old fashioned, old school deep dish plates. Now the chains plates actually fall very in line with what the bigger plates look like there. So that would be a more complete set in my opinion. But one of the reasons I stayed away from going that route was, and I gotta say, it was a hard choice to make the decision between the machined plates or the six shooter machined plates, is it came down to a couple of things for me. Number one, the price. So the price of the six shooters is actually less, which I found surprising because I think the six shooter plates are actually a little bit more attractive in terms of what they look like. But also when you take a look at the accuracy of the plates, the actual machined ones or the deep dish clones are within 2% for the bigger plates. So the six shooters are more accurate. So that would, in my mind, think that would, they would be more expensive. Not the case here. And lastly, the other deciding factor for me of going with the six shooters is actually the bigger plates, the 45s, are a little bit thinner than the 45s for the machine plates in those deep dishes. So when you stack them up on a bar, they're gonna end up taking up much less space. And I'm coming from the calibrated set where those things are very thin, so I went with the six shooters for that regard. But I don't really think you can go wrong either way. Now, speaking of other things I don't like, I mentioned already how they don't really fall in line with the chains plates, the bigger plates, and aesthetics. The only other thing aesthetically that I don't like about these plates is they're not perfect. So even though they're machined, parts of them are still cast. So you're still gonna have some inconsistencies in the finish. So don't expect to have plates that look perfectly fine. You're gonna have some little dings here and there or some flaws here and there, nothing major. And if you do, I'm sure Rogue will help you in customer service and either give you a credit or help replace that if it's anything significant but also in the finish in the paint itself. It's like a hammer tone type color, but even taking a look at the plates, you can see that the coloring and the way that they look is a little bit different from plate to plate. Some might say they're unique. I'm gonna say they're just not consistent. It's not a big deal because as I mentioned already, for the most part, they do what they're supposed to do, but part of me would just like the aesthetics to be more consistent across the board. But again, that's a small nitpick. So overall, I really like these plates. I find like they're a good deal when you take a look again, how accurate they are and the price themselves. If you're interested in buying them, I just wanna kind of throw this out there. If you look on the site, they do sell a set which has free shipping. However, it's not really free shipping because it ends up being about $80 higher than if you were just to add the plates yourself. So it's gonna charge you about $80 for shipping on that route. But I don't think most people will just buy one set. They're probably gonna buy a lot more 45s so just do yourself a favor, and if you're going to buy a lot of weight, so more than just a standard set, make sure you just add those in and do not add the set with the free shipping because that's gonna cancel out because more than likely you're gonna add enough weight where you're going to have to pay for freight shipping anyways, and if you buy the set on top of that, you're still gonna pay that $80 or so overhead, so there's gonna end up being roughly about, after taxes, about $100 more expensive. So just a little tidbit if you're interested in it. But again, I highly recommend these plates if you're looking. I haven't had any issues whatsoever, and that's after eight months of use and some pretty heavy use, moderately speaking, for myself and my own lifts. But I like them a lot, and I don't think you can find almost a better looking plate on the market that's this accurate and at this cost. If you have other questions about this or any other things else, leave those in the comment section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.